and welcome to this video tutorial on how to create an animation from a static image using V-Ray and After Effects. In this tutorial we're going to be creating a subtle animation by rendering out a single frame from V-Ray and using After Effects to compose this together with certain elements from that render to create animated effects in that scene. Now to do this I'm going to be using the scene I've set up here where we've got this building up on this hill and if we open up our V-Ray frame buffer to see what this render currently looks like. I've set up a few lights inside the building. We've got a kind of red light casting light on the side there and some scattered geometry in the foreground. Now at the moment I'm using an HDRI to light the scene. We've got this kind of sky background here but I'm going to replace this later in After Effects with an animated sky to give us a bit more character in this scene. Now to start with we're going to start by setting up a few render elements that are going to help us add some animated effects to this image when we put it into After Effects. To find our render elements, the ones we currently have loaded into the file can be found under this RGB color option in the frame buffer. If we drop down there we've got the RGB color which is just our rendered image and then the alpha which is any geometry in the scene and anything that's not geometry i.e. the background here which is in black. Now to add in more render elements to the scene, we need to open up our asset editor, which is a little V icon here. And we're gonna to go to the render elements tab and left click to add an element in. We're gonna start by adding in a Z depth map. And this is gonna help us add a bit of depth to the scene in post-production and also add some other sort of mist effects and depth of field effects in After Effects. Now the way that Z-Depth works is it renders out a separate image to your kind of rendered image of your scene. And this image is a black and white image with white being any object that's very close to the camera and black being any object that's very far away. Now this depth is diagnosed and sort of dictated by this near and far distance here. And these values represent a kind of unit base that your scene will be based in. So mine is sort of zero to 500, 500 being 500 meters away from the camera, because I'm currently using meters in this scene. Now, in order to kind of look and see what this looks like in our scene, I'm just gonna render out a test view of this just by hitting the render button here. And we're gonna have a look at what the Z depth is currently looking like with these near and far distance set from zero to 500. Now what I imagine is it's probably going to be a bit too far in the scene and if that happens you're either going to get a really washed out image where the image is going to look completely white in the Z depth or we won't see anything at all. It might be completely black if that far distance isn't far enough away. So to find the Z depth we can just click on the RGB color option and scroll down to the Z depth here and here we can see a preview of this. Now if you can't see one yet it might take a little bit of time to load in your scene so just give it a minute or two and it should drop up. And what you can see with this near and far distance set from 0 to 500 is the building is actually still fully white. We can get a little bit of grey there on the objects that are furthest away but there's not much contrast between the foreground and the background here. So what I'm going to do is I want the sort of grey, dark grey parts to be the back of the building here. We want to dial in this distance. So I'm going to hype this up and make it a little bit closer to the camera. And I've worked out that a distance of around 125 meters works well for this scene. Now you can find out what this distance is just by measuring from your camera to your object, or you can just try out different values in the Z depth until it gets the right effect that you're looking for. Now, as you can see, now I've changed that value. It takes a little bit of time to load up, but here we've got it loaded in now. And we can see we've got a nice gradient from the foreground being white to a dark gray in the background at our furthest distance. So that's our Z depth map set up and we're going to be able to use that to add in some mist later in our kind of post-production effects and also add some depth of field effects to the camera as well. So let's stop that render now and we're going to add in the second render element that we're going to use for this. Now because my image uses lots of different light sources, we've got a kind of red light from the side, some interior lights here, what might be nice is to start to animate those lights turning on and off within our scene. Now usually to do that we need to go into V-Ray and enable and disable all of these lights and you can see I've got seven different lights here as well as a sun that's not turned on but if you had a sun that might also be listed that we can turn on and off using these settings. But what I'm going to do is we're going to use a render element called a light mix and if we go up to our render elements find the light mix setting here add this in and make sure it's grouped by individual lights. 
what this would do is if we then render out our scene again, it will then individually list all of our lights that we have in our scene as separate render elements for us. And what this means is we can actually turn them on and off in post-production just by overlaying different parts of the render together to create the effect that lights might be turning on and off in the scene. So as you can see, the render still renders out as we've got with our kind of different colored lights here. But if we drop down on our RGB color, we've now, as well as the depth, Z depth, we have all of our lights listed. So if I select one of these, you'll see that it's just that stairwell light there. If we select the lower ground light, it's just the light in that place. We can select the kind of light on the right and it's lighting up that part. So it's all of the lights sort of isolated in the scene. As well as this, we've got this environment light, which is our objects without any of those lights turned on. So using this environment and each of those separate lights together we can actually selectively turn on and off some of the lights in our scene so this is really useful for if you want to create dynamic lighting effects in post-production afterwards now as well as these two the z depth and the light mix you might also want to add in a few other passes that can be helpful when post-producing your image some of these i'll add in in our render elements are the raw light is always quite useful and also the raw reflection can be quite useful there and it's always usually helpful to add in a material random color just in case you need to sort of tweak or kind of customize any key materials in the scene now with those five added we're now going to render out our still frame of animation because we're going to be zooming into this we might be panning across it to create our animated effects it's important that we render it out at high enough resolution because we're just rendering a single frame and not a whole animation, it means we're not going to have to wait a really long time for this because we're not going to have to render out 100 frames in order to get our animation. So it means we can kind of afford to set the animation resolution a little bit higher and give us a nice high resolution image to work with. So for this, I'm going to set it at 3000 by 3000 pixels. I think anything more than 2000 is usually considered pretty high resolution. Imagine a sort of standard screen might be a kind of 2000 pixels wide, unless you've got a kind of 4K screen and this might be 4000 pixels. Um, but if you go for around 3 or 4000 pixels, you're going to get a pretty good high resolution of an image. So we're going to set that in the render output under the settings here. Make sure we're on our progressive render. So just by turning off interactive, make sure it's on progressive. Put the quality to high plus. Make sure you've got no time limit on there so it's not going to stop and the noise limit's very low. This is usually dictated by the kind of quality here so you'll see that the noise and the subdivisions go up with that quality setting. This is kind of like a preset for everything. And once that's set, we're then just going to hit the teapot to render out our render. Now we're going to just let that render and I'm going to pause the video for now. And then once it's hit a nice level, it might have hit that noise limit and so we'll stop the render or it might be at a kind of high enough quality that you think it's kind of ready to go, in which case you can manually stop it here. We're then going to take that render into After Effects to start to animate this scene. Now this image is finished rendering, we're going to save this out as separate image files. To do that, we're going to hit the save icon here and go to save all image channels to separate files. We're going to find a folder for this, call this render, and we're going to save these out as PNGs. And if we hit the save icon there, what it will do is it will save each of our render elements out as separate PNGs within that file. Now those are finished saving, we can find them in the folder here. And you can see that we now have separate PNG images for each of our render elements there. The PNG allows us to keep the transparent background in the image, which means we can replace the sky when we drop it into After Effects. Now, as well as saving these all out as PNGs, we're also going to just go to our Z depth here and we're going to save this single channel as a JPEG as well, because we don't actually want the transparent background on our Z depth when we use it to add mist and a depth of field effect to our composition. So once those are all saved, we can find them in the folder there and what we're going to do now is we're going to open up After Effects and bring our image files in. So opening up After Effects we're going to go to new composition and open up a new 2000 by 2000 pixel composition here. The reason I'm doing it at this resolution is it's slightly lower than what I rendered my image out at which will allow me to sort of zoom in to my image without any distortion. I'm also going to just set the duration here 
to 15 seconds. We're just going to do a sort of short 15 second animation and then I'm going to hit OK. Now we've got that, we're going to go back to our image files and we're going to bring in the ones we want to use for this particular animation. So I'm going to bring in all of my single light animations from my light mix render pass which isolates each of my bits of lighting in the scene. We're going to bring in the environment which is the scene without any lighting there. So these ones, the environment, we're going to bring in the render file here. We're also going to bring in the Z depth but we're going to make sure we do the one without the PNG background so the JPEG version and we can find that just by hovering over and it says it's a JPEG there. And I think those will be enough for the time being. So we're just going to click, drag and drop those into our composition here. Now we're going to start building up our composition file and we're going to actually start with this render environment which is the rendered version of my image without any lights on because we actually in this particular animation I'm going to be zooming in to my sort of environment and the lights are going to start turning on one at a time to start to sort of reveal the final render. So we're going to drag and drop that into the composition here and what that would do is it would just create a new layer in my composition and you'll find that for 15 seconds it's just got that still image there and we're slightly zoomed in on the main part of the building. So what I'm going to start with is we're just going to open up this layer here, go to the transform options in After Effects, go down to the scale and we're just going to zoom it out until it's just off the frame and it should be around sort of 68, 67% there for this particular one. So that's going to be the starting frame of my animation. And the basis of this animation is we're just going to do a slow zoom in to the middle of the building. So what we'll do is going to hit the little time icon next to the scale just to add a keyframe at zero second mark. We're going to scroll it to 15 seconds and then we're just going to zoom in to a nice position probably around somewhere like there I think. So then the animation will just slowly be zooming in to that farm as we can see here. So this is going to be the basis of my animation and we're now going to start to add in some other layers into this to create some more effects here. The first of these that I'm going to add is we're going to start turning on the lights in the scene. Now to do that we've got each of our rendered lights up here in different layers and let's start with the nice kind of central light in the middle of the scene. So we're just going to click, drag and drop that on top of my light here and I'm going to just rename this so it's a little bit easier to see and we're just going to call this light 01 and we're going to rename this one base put that in capitals so we can't miss it because we're going to keep coming back to this base file now obviously with the light at the moment it's completely eclipsing the piece i have below my zoom in so we want the light effect to zoom at the same rate as our base option here and to do that we can actually use this little sort of icon here next to the scale which means if we click drag and attach this to the scale here what it would do is the figures would go red and that means it's linking that scale option in our light to the base scale so what it would do is if we sort of pan up and down you'll see that this value will also scale at the same rate as the one below so we're actually adding that sort of scaling effect from our light to the base so they'll both be scaling at the same rate. Now at the moment the light is still eclipsing the base layer below so in order to blend it we need to put this light layer on a blending mode and to do that we can go to layer blending mode here and add it on a screen and what the screen would do is it will remove all of the black parts of the image and just leave that lighting effect like so there. So there you can see that light is now kind of panning at the same rate as the base image and it's overlaid directly on top. Now what we can do with this is we can actually change the opacity of the light so we can dial it up and down turning the light off and on. And this allows us to dynamically turn the lights on at certain points in our animation. So let's say we get to the kind of two second mark here and we want to turn the light on. I can click on the opacity which is set to zero at the moment click my stopwatch and then a few frames later we're going to scale that up to 100% and what that would do if we pan it back is it's going to slowly zoom in and then it will start to turn on that light 
and then it will zoom and pan with us. So what we've done there is we've just overlaid our lighting effect, matched the scale to the scale of the image below by using this little icon here, which means we can match that property. And then we've just added a little timer on the opacity to turn that light on at a particular point in the animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing with some of my other lights here. So we're going to have them turning on at different points in the animation. Now I'm not going to kind of run through this again in the video because it's exactly the same process. So I'm just going to pause and add a few more lights in and then we're going to kind of pick up after that point. Now I've added all these lights in, I'll quickly play it back. And you can see here how they kind of all turn on one after the other to create this nice sort of animated effect of each of the lights in my scene turning on. And it's quite a fun way of just adding a little bit of kind of dynamic movement in the scene, making it feel like each of the lights are sort of switching on in turn. And that's just by creating a separate layer for each of them and just adjusting that opacity for a different time to turn each of those lights on. Now, because I've made so many, I've just named them light one to eight here. And I'm actually just gonna color code them. Let's make them into a sort of kind of green or maybe a sort of pink or yellow actually here, just so we can kind of see them quite clearly. And we'll just sort of go around color coding these so we can kind of clearly separate them from the base image there. So that's all of our internal lights. We actually have one more light here, which is this sort of external red light out the scene. And what we'll do is we're gonna put that on top, do exactly the same thing we're just going to link the scale of that light here, link it down to the base image again, just so everything matches that scale. But for this one, I'll put it back on a screen blending mode here, and I'm going to have it just gradually turning on over the course of my scene. So let's say at about this point here, we'll set the opacity down to zero, turn that on, and then at around maybe just after the last light goes on, so around the sort of nine second mark, let's have that sort of fully red. So what this would do is it's just gonna slowly turn that red light on over the course of this scene and build it up slowly. So you can sometimes have the lights turning on really quickly just by having that opacity change over the course of sort of a 0.1 and 0.2 of a second, or you can really stretch it out to have it sort of gradually turning on over nine, 10 seconds to create a sort of more gradual effect. So if we sort of play that back, you'll see that that red light is just slowly kind of coming into play as the animation moves on, giving the whole image a kind of glow there. So that's the sort of base movement we've got here with each of our lights in turn. And we'll give this one a slightly different color. Let's make it a kind of red here um, so we can see it. Now what we're gonna also add in is a new background into here. And to do that, I'm going to find an image to give myself a nice sort of sky background. Now, let's go to my sort of folders here. And in here, we've got sort of textures. And I've just downloaded this sort of constable painting image, which has quite a nice dynamic sky. So we're going to use this in place of a sky. I'm just going to drag and drop that into my assets in my After Effects. And we're going to move that to the very bottom of my layers and let's rename this sky so we can see it there and we'll make this a kind of different color let's put it as a cyan there now as you can see it's sort of already zoomed in at the back of my screen here it might be that we just want to kind of get that scale right so we'll just sort of play around with the scale i want it small enough but i don't want to see those trees in there so we obviously want to kind of move it around a little bit i don't really want to see any background in there so maybe it needs to be a little bit more zoomed in like so and let's just scroll it across and move it down a bit it needs to be a little bit bigger maybe a kind of 62 should do sometimes you just need to sort of dial this in i think we'll do it 63 64. there so we just have the clouds and essentially what I want to create with this is a kind of panning effect on the sky. So it slowly kind of moves from left to right there. So what we're going to do is we'll find a good starting position, which I think should be about there, like so. We're just going to hit our stopwatch on that position, and then we're going to scroll it across to 15 seconds, 
and we're going to move it over to the left until we hit that tree so just before then there and all we've done there is we've just added a key point a keyframe sort of at one position and then at another so now as we're zooming in that sky is just slowly kind of moving backwards as well now because we're zooming into the building but the sky is not really zooming although it wouldn't really zoom because it's quite far away it's creating a slight parallax effect which gives us a little bit of sense of depth in the scene what we can also do is just add a slight variation in the scale so when we get to here let's put this up to sort of 66 percent potentially and all that's going to do is it's just going to very gradually zoom in the sky as well just to make it feel like the sky is kind of moving with the camera move as well so it's just creating slightly dynamic effects there to help sell the effect of the camera kind of panning in like so now we can also add a few effects to the sky itself um, if we go to the effects and go to color corrections we might want to use this to match the tone of the image a little bit more so i think here we're going to just add an exposure just to lower that down slightly just to match the darkness of the image i'm going to use the kind of gamma offset here to help me do that too just want to keep it ever so slight on there i think as well let's also go to the color corrections go to hue saturation we're going to in our little hue saturation option here we're going to tick on the colorize option let's go and scale it up to a sort of bluish hue here just to sort of match the blue tones of the image might need to kind of just play around with that darkness lightness and the saturation and then what we can do as well is if we find that hue saturation in the sky layer under effects under hue saturation we've got this compositing options here and we can lower that effect opacity so i'm just going to do it somewhere around there like so and actually we could almost brighten up the sky as the lights come on but i think for now we're just going to keep it like this so the sky is just nicely moving in the background of my image as well now to finish this off we're going to add a couple more effects just to create a little bit more depth in the scene and that's where our z depth is going to come in so if we go back and find that z depth map here we're just going to drag it and drop it right on top of the red light layer here and we're going to rename it mist and we're going to use this to create a kind of fog in the scene here now the first thing we need to do is obviously we need to make it scale correctly with the base image so exactly as we've done before open up the transform open up the base transform and just pick that whip move it down and lock it into the sky there and that way our mist will then transform and scale with the base now that we've done that we can then also blend this in and we're going to move this on to a screen blending mode as well so just select that mist layer go to layer blending modes and screen to bring it on now what it's currently doing is because it's white in the foreground it's kind of adding a mist to the foreground but not the background and i actually want it to be the opposite to this so in order to invert this image the best way to do it to keep that level of control with this effect is actually to go to color corrections in my effects panel and add in a curves here and if we take the kind of right hand side of the curves and drop it down to the bottom take the left hand side and drop it up to the top essentially we're just inverting that z depth around so now where it was black is now white and where it's white it was now black and we can also use the curves to move that fog into different places in the scene so if we want to pull it forward we can drag it to the right if we want to move it backwards we can drag it down on the left hand side axis there and we'll just find a sort of nice balance here and then we're also going to just lower that opacity as well and what we'll do is i think we're going to have the building sort of emerge from the mist so we can actually animate that opacity clicking on the time again scrolling it to the very end and then just lowering that opacity down slightly and what that would do is it would just get less misty as we move into the image there like so now for a final effect we're just going to add a slight rain effect to this image to kind of give the feeling that it's a sort of slight rainy misty sort of day to do that we're just going to create a brand new layer make a new solid layer here 
make sure this layer is black and we're going to keep it at the same size as our current layer, hit OK. Then we're going to go to the effects panel up here, we're going to go to simulation and down to rainfall there. And what this would do is it will add a kind of rain simulation onto the top of our sort of black solid. And we're going to just up the opacity to 100% so we can see it. And if we just hit enter, you can kind of see that rain effect there. And we're going to do a couple of things to let this match our scene. The first is we're just going to add a bit of depth to this. I usually scroll this up a bit higher just so it feels like the image is a bit deeper. We're going to also kind of change the size of the raindrops, make them a little bit bigger, get a few more sort of in there. We can kind of adjust the spread of them if you kind of want them a little bit sort of different location. Um, we can kind of up the number of drops if you want to. And once we're sort of happy with the amount and we think that's sort of working well, we also want to go to the layer, go to the blending modes and put this on a screen as well so we can start to see it over the top of our image. So there we have that sort of rain effect. Now another thing to make this look a little bit better is we're just going to lower that size slightly down I think and we're going to add in a blur to this just to make the rain feel a little bit more blurred with the motion. So if we go to blur we can find a directional blur and then we just up the blur length just to add a bit of motion blur to that rain like so. There. So there we've got our sort of rain effect going on. We can always sort of lower or heighten the opacity of that. And what you might also want to do is just scale it similar to the moving of the image. We probably don't want to scale it as much as the pan is scaling. But if we just go to transform, hit on the scale option, and we're just going to scale it up maybe to sort of like 120 there. Just so the rain is slightly scaling in as we move into our image it will just give us a slight sort of scale on that rain effect like so there you might almost want to sort of play with the opacity as well as it's moving in but there you can see we've now got that sort of nice rain effect over the top of the image giving a little bit more sort of dynamic atmosphere to the scene as well so i think we're going to sort of finish up there so that was essentially the main points of just starting to tweak that still image here and starting to add different animated effects on top of it. Obviously you can kind of keep going with these and add in more layers, more different effects on. We could kind of compose different bits of footage if we wanted to on top of this. But as a starter, this is just a way of taking a single rendered frame and using it to turn it into an animation here. And it might be a way of just starting to add a little bit of more dynamic motion to your renders that you're getting out from V-Ray. This effect also works with just still imagery you might have done in Photoshop or Illustrator. So don't feel it's just limited to renders that you've done. It can be done with any other sort of imagery as well. So I hope you found this video tutorial useful. And if you want to watch any other videos on rendering, animation, different effects using Rhino, V-Ray, After Effects and Photoshop, please check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.